Name is Lyle Thompson. My Ungohoi name is Dehasanunde. It means he's flying over us. I am Hot Clan from the Onondaga Nation, and I play professional lacrosse. Grew up in a really tight-knit family, got three older brothers, a younger sister, and we stayed together for, for everything. Grew up in Onondaga, didn't grow up with, with much really in terms of money and access to like a lot of opportunities. Kind of created our own. We're all lacrosse players. Well, me and my brothers were all lacrosse players, so I grew up with a stick in my hands. I mean, I think the biggest thing, we always say this, is, is that, you know, we didn't grow up with a lot of money. We grew up without electricity. Um, without running water, it was just how we were, how we were raised. So um, we didn't feel like we needed a lot. Grew up sort of an old school, traditional way, practicing our ceremonies, practicing our traditions, all that was passed down to us. I like to think my parents did a good job of teaching us the values of our, our culture and instilling, you know, respect, a good mind, um, and joy. So we, I think we were raised in a healthy environment. The biggest thing my father always preached was respect. He taught us it through lacrosse, but also in, in everyday life, whether it was standing up for the Pledge of Allegiance or the national anthem, shaking hands after games, and especially through the game of lacrosse. How, how you respect your stick was, was the biggest thing. Um, always kind of reminding us where the stick comes from and how that the game of lacrosse is intertwined with our culture and our culture is, that's what our culture is, it's thank you. It's, it's being mindful, it's showing respect to the, the other natural beings of the world. And I can't say it was just my, my dad, but my, my mom both, they both thought it was important for us to, one, be respectful and be mindful of our surroundings, the people around us, the things around us, to ourselves, but also to do things with a good mind. We always, I always say I play lacrosse with a clear mind and I think that's all that means is, is to be able to have good intentions. Every day you face conflict and it's more of a matter of how you can overcome that conflict and how you respond to it. So, you know, in a game if I'm getting checked or, you know, someone says something racist to me, how quick am I able to brush that off. Philadelphia Wings lacrosse team is apologizing for racist comments hurled at an opposing player during a home game last night. Wings announcer Shawnee Hill said, quote, let's snip the ponytail, referring to Georgia Swarm player Lyle Thompson, who is Native American. In addition, Thompson says the crowd at the Wells Fargo Center started saying to him that they would scalp him. The team says it is taking disciplinary and educational measures. The announcer issued his own apology, saying he wants to reach out to Thompson directly. I, I mean, I don't want to sit here and say that, like, it was tough and I went through a lot of racism. I think I handled things really good, but I faced racism. Remarks about my hair, remarks about your culture, really. That's just for the most part when people know that you're on a team full of natives. Um, if they want to attack anything, it's either going to be the one person with long hair or their whole existence as, yeah. as being native. Calling you, your family, drunks, alcoholics, um, sort of just the stereotypical things. Mm -hmm. As an athlete, as a lacrosse player, I think it's one, like I said, I just don't have a desire for it. Mm -hmm. And I don't think it's gonna, it'll serve me in any way. I think it's important for me to be a positive influence and someone who, who can advocate for someone who's lived a sober life for that, but I also think like for my kids, mm -hmm. um, I wanna be able to show them what my dad did for us mm -hmm. and um, pass that on in a way to make sure that they don't. And if they do, they do. All I can do is be a positive influence on them show, and, and show them how what I've done helped me and helped me stay on track because I watched Jeremy do it, my sister too, but Miles and Heine, you know, they've, they've never touched it. And um, 
the, seeing them go through all that too, they've developed sort of that same mindset where it's like, um, there's no point of it. I've gone this far in life without it. It's, it's not necessary. Oh, we'll be married 37 years. What's the secret? Uh, my cooking. No, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> my cooking's keeping him home. Yeah. I think uh, I think a lot of our like our traditions kept us kept us going because our beliefs, you know, kept us strong. Um, with our family, the way we raised them, the way we kind of conduct ourselves. I'm grateful for for everything that we've had. You know, I I I'm, we were blessed with uh, with our kids. I mean, to have them do so much as far as they've gone, what they've accomplished. Our story is about, it's always been about them, about our family. He was persistent. I mean, you couldn't keep his stick out of his hands. You know, the stories that I, that I, that I preached to him when he was young with his wooden stick, he cherished that stick the most. He, he was real sad when uh, he broke that stick. And it meant a lot to him. So I knew that, I knew he had the medicine. You know, all my boys had it, but he, he practiced it the most. You know, I, we preached school, we preached a lot of different things, but lacrosse was what he wanted to do. But he was, you know, cross country, just as persistent. You know, he had to be, he wanted to be the best. He, he- Competitive. Put everything he had Everyone, the greatest gift you can give your child is your time. I've always believed in that. It's, um, you know, some parents can give a lot more than others, but, you know, I, I feel that, you know, they get so much, their memories later on in life, that's what, that's what comes back to them. And it gives them something to be happy about. You know, this is what he done. And I, I'm pretty comfortable in saying that I don't have to worry about my boys now. Some things I want people to know about the game of lacrosse is I always just like to paint a picture of what lacrosse is in our communities, especially in the Six Nations communities, Akuzasne, Onondaga, you know, Keteragis. I think within our culture, being Haudenosaunee, we have a lot of different teachings that teach us about respect, the good mind, and joyfulness. We have a lot of different tools and gifts to share with the world. You know, we're able to see the values it could instill in you and the values it brings to our culture and sort of pass it on to the rest of the world. I think that's the biggest thing with, with the game of lacrosse, with where it comes from, the reason we call it a medicine game, how it was once played for you know, to settle disputes, to now being played as, as just a form of medicine, mental medicine, really. Yeah. Um, and you have to believe in that. You have to believe in that, the energy it brings. When I look at, like, teaching the cultural values of the game, the history of the game, I think it's important for people to know where the game comes from and it being a native game mm -hmm. um, and the teachings that it comes with. I want to make sure I'm always advocating for the game's original intentions. Us as Indigenous people, we personify everything. Mm -hmm. You know, we personify Grandmother Moon, Eldest Brother the Sun, mm -hmm. um, the Earth, Mother Earth, the Sky, Father Sky. We personify so much. Um, even us lacrosse players, we personify the stick. Mm -hmm. Like, there's a reason we have such a deep connection with it. Like, we put it beside our bed. You know, some people give it names. Mm -hmm. We are buried with it, we're born with it. There's a reason for that, and it's because we treat it on a spiritual level. That's what, that's what sacredness is. In a way, it's personifying, um, but really it's a sacredness. I think I personify the spirit of the game. I try to, because it helps me respect it more. I learned that through the game and the teachings my parents gave us, but I try, as a father now, I try to instill that in the kids, in my kids, not just through lacrosse, through every day, because every day everybody faces conflict and 
issues and problems that they have to solve. And the best way to be optimal, the best way to stay happy is do things with a good mind. And that's sort of an indigenous teaching is to use a good mind, gut and go heal. Try to remind myself of that. He's an awesome teammate, great person to, you know, kind of um, learn from and, and, and play with. And, you know, there's somebody who, you know, when he's really going and, and working hard, you know, he, he just takes you to another level and, and makes you want to be a better player. And, you know, he makes everyone so much better around him. And then uh, the thing, I think the things I enjoy most, you know, about being Lyle's teammate, you know, is our travel, um, you know, long road trips in the car, on the plane, on the bus, um, spending all that time together. You know, we, we start to learn, you know, about Lyle as, you know, the, the human being more so than the, the lacrosse player, which is really cool. Three words to describe him. I would say calm. Everything that's come to mind is really just the word calm. You know, everything that he does, you know, whether it's on the floor, I say calm, patience, and energetic. You know, I think they all kind of blend together, and I think that's what kind of makes Lyle unique. You know, no matter the situation on the floor, you know, he's always has a calm, calming presence about him and kind of settles you down uh, on the bench. And I think that goes, you know, further than just the floor, that's all over in life and someone you can always count on for sure. Well, I, I think for us to share our stories and do it, you know, all in house, mm -hmm. it's it's an act of sovereignty, mm -hmm. and um, we're that's what we want at the end of the day. We want to be us mm -hmm. as people, but at the same time, for me personally as a lacrosse player, um, to share my story, I think it's important for the next generation to see that, mm -hmm. and for you know, our elders to be able to see that, like, this is how far we've come mm -hmm. and to be proud of something. We want to continue to inspire and show people that, you know, we're doctors, we're lawyers, we're artists, we're professional lacrosse players, professional athletes. Mm -hmm. We're capable of doing that so that we can encourage the next generation. I just want to be Ongohoa and I want to live an Ongohoa way of life. And nowadays, you see a struggle with that. Mm -hmm. And even within our own people, you know, we fight amongst each other and judge each other. Mm -hmm. um, and that's not what we need. We need to always be encouraging to one another so that we're helping out mm -hmm. each other. And I'd say the last thing is just to, to have fun. Do things with a smile on your face. Do things um, with like a joyful intention 